Hi, I'm Ben with Filthy Motorsports and Crawlpedia.com. In this video, I'm going to go over measuring for coilovers. Uh, this will, of course, apply for shocks and bypasses as well, uh, but coilovers is typically where this uh, conversation takes place for me, and I go through this about 20 times a day, so hopefully this will make sense. So whenever you're measuring for a coilover, you always base it off of your limiting factor, and that's almost always your compression stroke. So I suggest get the vehicle to the point where you're able to take measurements. I do have customers calling asking to buy coilovers, um, take a guess, make your best estimate, and I'll make them work. That is doable. You can always change rod ends, you can always change springs to make them work, but it's usually a lot easier to get to the point where your forelink is either tacked in, uh, or at least to the point where you're able to cycle your axle uh, or A-arms or trailing arms uh, to get some measurements. So. Um, in a typical solid axle application, uh, those are usually the trickiest because with A-arms or trailing arms, you pretty much know where things will end up. But with a four-link, uh, the axle moves in strange ways. So when you're measuring for coilovers, you always start by finding your compressed lengths. And what that means is cycle the axle to its full compression position. Typically, Unlike this model, you'll have an engine where the differential might hit the oil pan, the tires might hit the fenders, uh, you might already have bump stops in there, but that's your limiting factor. So do a full right tuck, full left tuck, straight up, and then a full droop. Um, if you haven't made your upper shock mounts yet, that's perfect. Uh, the more flexibility you have uh, when you're giving us measurements, uh, the better off you are. Um, another thing to keep in mind is when you're doing a solid axle setup, you want your lower coilover mounts as far apart on the axle as you can put them. You want your upper shock mounts as high up as you can put them, and you want the tops leaning in at about five degrees. This is not an ideal setup, obviously it's an RC car, but um, you kind of want to create a, a, a trapezoid shape with the tops leaning in at about five degrees. Also, the higher up your upper shock mounts are, the more stable the vehicle is going to be. So I always use the analogy of a boat out in the ocean. The, um, the more weight you put on top of that boat, the more top heavy it's going to be and it's going to tip over on its own. Take that same amount of weight and put it into the hull under the water line and you won't be able to tip it over no matter what you do. So the higher up your upper coilover mounts are and the more weight you get below that, the more everything is working in your favor. So keep that in mind and that's why I usually try and go over this as early as possible when you have a chance of setting your coilover mounts. Um, you, always, always, you also always want to run the largest coilover you can fit. So even if you're only cycling 12 inches, if you can fit a 14 inch coilover, if you can fit a, a 16 inch coilover, um, you're, you're, you're getting benefits other than the additional travel that who knows, maybe down the road when you move with, go with larger tires, you could use that additional travel. The larger the coilover you have, the higher up those upper shock mounts are, the lower your spring rates are going to be, the more oil capacity you have, the more shaft overlap you have. Those are all benefits that you get by running a larger shock, um, even if you don't need the additional travel. So with that said, figure out where your upper coilover mounts are going to be, um, take those measurements, and Either send them over to us, and that's a great place for us to start, and we can run some numbers for you. But really, all you do is take a look at the size chart. We have them all listed on our website under the coilovers and any shock. You'll find the compressed and extended lengths on those, and you're simply going to go with the largest coilover or shock that'll fit within the compressed space. Keep in mind, you never want to fully bottom out on a shock. You'll want to have some form of external hydraulic bump stop to do that, and then you will need limiting straps to limit it. But it's really easy to limit a shock, but if you get a shock that's too small, you're going to be losing up travel and thus losing droop travel. If you get a shock that's too big, you're going to be bottoming out on it and have unused up travel, and then you're going to have too much droop travel to use. So you, you never want a shock that's too small, you never want a shock that's too big, but you want to get the largest one that'll fit within your compression stroke. Once you've found the largest shock that'll fit within there, then it's easy. On a coilover, we figure out where you want your ride height to be, and based off of those measurements, we'll be able to determine what your spring rates should be. That's gonna be another video that I'm gonna be making here shortly, is figuring out what spring rates you need and how to set those up, but this is how you measure for coilovers. Hopefully that helps answer some questions. Um, 
if, if there's something that I've missed or if there's uh, any additional help that you need, always feel free to email me. That's sales at filthymotorsports.com or info at crawlpedia.com. Uh, feel free to leave a comment under this video. We're constantly checking those and trying to respond to those questions and comments. Um, again, my name is Ben with Filthy Motorsports and Crawlpedia. Thanks for watching.